Hi, I'm Karen with CK Customs PA. I'm also an admin on the Facebook group, Cricket Help Desk Unofficial. In this video, we're going to take a virtual tour around the Cricut Design Space Canvas. Let's go ahead and start on a brand new canvas. Here you'll see I have an empty canvas. If you start in the upper left, you do have your menu button where you can go to things like calibration, account details, settings, or even sign out of your account if needed. On the far upper right side of your screen, you have the link to my projects that'll take you into all of your previously saved projects. You'll have the save button that'll become active once you have a project on the canvas to save. You have your drop down to select the machine type. And then you have the make it button that'll become active once you have a project on the screen. Down the left side, you have a new button to open a brand new canvas. That's what we see here in front of us. You have your templates. These are pre-built by Cricut to help you see where your projects may line up on one of their pre-built templates. As you insert these onto your canvas, they'll just create a design for you to help with alignment of your design. It will not actually print or cut any of these templates. Within projects, you can browse through all kinds of projects, both entered by Cricut, by fellow community Cricut designers, and you can also toggle the down menu to any projects you have favorited or your own as well. There are several categories you can search through as well. When you select one of the projects, the screen will open with additional details as to how the project is going to work, what materials you may need, anything you need to prepare, and how to cut it and assemble if necessary. At the bottom, you'll see if there's a price associated to it or if it's part of your Cricut Access subscription if you have subscribed to Cricut Access. The next option on the left toolbar are images. This will include images owned by Cricut with a price associated to them. If they are free for use without any subscription, they will say free. And if they're part of your Cricut Access, they will say subscribed. Next, you have your text menu. When you click that, a text box will appear on your canvas where you can type your message. We'll come back to that shortly. Next on the left side menu are your shapes. You have several shapes that Cricut has given you. Simply click on them and they will add them to your canvas. Lastly on the lower left is your upload. This is where you'll go to import any pre-existing images that you'd like to manipulate and design in Cricut Design Space. You'll see your compatible file types like JPEG, GIF, PNG, BMP, SVG, and DXF. When you click Upload Image, you'll then be able to browse for those different image types to bring into your design. Once you select your image, you'll be able to go through an upload process. If you select an SVG, it will skip to the end step for saving. This was not an SVG, so I will need to go through the cleanup steps. To do that, I'm going to click Complex and click Continue. You'll see here that I have two colors to this design. I have black and white, where the white we intend to remove. So I will click Advanced Options, let it know that I have two colors, and I'm going to go ahead and increase my tolerance to take care of any blurred, uh, any blurred pieces of the design. If I now click on the gray area, it'll flip it to the blue and white check to indicate that there is no more background or color there and it will be transparent as it goes on to the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and go through all the rest of these areas, cleaning this up and removing all of the gray so that it becomes transparent for the design. Sure. 
Should you make a mistake, there is an undo button. You can see it brought that piece back that I had last hidden. You have a redo, you have your zoom out and your zoom in. You also have a preview button. This will show you a preview of what it would look like as a cut design. This will help to see if you maybe missed clearing any of the sections. I missed this spot here on the right and that helps show me that. I'm going to go ahead and click it now. Once your design is cleaned, go ahead and click continue. You'll then select a cut image or a print then cut. In this case, I'm looking for a cut. You can apply a name and any tags you would like. Once you've done that, click upload. It'll add it to your recent uploads where you can then select it and anything else you'd like and insert image. This is going to bring it onto my canvas. On my canvas, I now have my hello. I have my heart with paw print. I have my happy Easter that we just uploaded and I have the circle shape. Going across the top menu, you have an undo button, a redo button. If I select one of my items, you have an operations menu right now, currently set to basic cut, but this is where you can change it to do a wavy cut. You can perforate, you can use your drawing features and use your Cricut pens, your foil, your scoring, your debossing and engraving or switch it to a print then cut. These all require additional extra tools. With, with many of these options, there's going to be a box next to the operation. In this case, we're selecting the color of the cut. If I were doing a print then cut, I would actually be setting the color of the print. They include patterns for that as well on the print then cut. You can see if I wanted to keep this as a print then cut, it would come out with this green plaid pattern design and go to my printer that way to then be cut on the Cricut. Let's go ahead and move this back to a basic cut. You have a select all button, literally selects all your objects, followed by deselect of the same button if that's what was last selected. We have an edit option. Edit allows you to cut, copy, or if you have it cut or copied, paste would be visible as well. You can also use your keyboard controls to cut, copy, and paste in Cricut Design Space. Offsets are a new feature that allow you to create a shadow effect or an extra layer for your design. I now have two layers to this object. Let's go ahead and remove some of these items from the screen so we can better play with the rest of our menu. All right, I have my shadow offset with my design on top. And let's show how we can arrange. So if I select both, I can use the arrange menu and I can flip the order front to back, back to front, so if I select, let's say one of them and I arrange with move backward, you now can't see it because it's hiding behind this other one. If I arrange and bring it back to the front, or in this case, I have the front selected. So let's send that to the back. You can now see I've switched the order. The order is also shown on the right side of the screen in your layers. You can drag these around to flip the order just the same as I did with the arrange. We also have alignment tools. In the alignment menu, you can left align multiple objects selected. You can see there, they both came to the left side. You can center horizontally. That places it perfectly center between your left and right sides. You can right align. They'll adjust both to the right side. You can top align, bringing them to the top center vertically, so perfectly aligned between top and bottom. 
bottom a line where they meet at the bottom. Or you can do all at once and center the design both horizontally and vertically. You also have distribute options. So if you had three or more items, so let's um, let's get another shape on here. We're going to take the paw print out of the mix for a moment. So let's get that one slid out of the way. And we're going to use our hello and our circles. I can select all three items back into that align menu. And I can center vertically. So you see where that line is going through the box in the center. That's kind of what I help envision for my design is where that line is. So it's perfectly aligned, centered vertically, but I can now use these distribute options. It takes your furthest left and furthest right objects and anything in between, it's going to distribute evenly horizontally. Now my hello is perfectly centered within this design. You can also do the same vertically if this was a vertical design. Now that looks a little silly with the circles, but if we do it with some other shape, such as, oops, trying to grab both, there we go. If I bring these back into play and let's recenter them, let's make it a little smaller and let's group them so that they're a single item and duplicate. We'll come over to those menus in a moment, but maybe I want my hello inside of that, which would be a little better design than those hearts we were playing with, or those circles, I'm sorry, those circles we were playing with. So again, I'm going to center vertically and I'm going to distribute horizontally and that's a better design. If I say, yeah, it looked a little funny still. So bring that one in, bring that one in, but they're not exact. Again, select them, do those same steps again. And we've centered our design. Next on the menu is a flip option. You can flip horizontally or vertically. So if I wanted those both outward from each other where they're opposites, I could do that. Let's flip them the other way. I think I like the other way better. Like that. All right. You also have your size options. You can adjust your sizes using these numbers right here. And I can say, let's make it a three inch wide. And we're going to let the height adjust on its own. I hit tab. It did that. Or I could say I want it three inches by three inches. So I would have to unlock the dimensions, click this unlock. And now I can adjust the height. Oops. I can adjust the height without the width also moving because I had unlocked it. These same adjustments can be made using the lock and unlock on the design and using these arrows to adjust the height and width. If it were locked, then you only have um, locked ratios when you're moving your height and width. Back up in the menu, you have a rotate option. You can use the arrows to rotate, or you can just insert a number. Like if I wanted to go 90 degrees and that is the same as the rotate around the image, you'll see we had last sets 90 degrees, but now that I'm moving it manually, once I let go, you'll see that rotate number has adjusted on its own. You can move the items around on your canvas by clicking and dragging them. You'll see that the position, had changed when I done when I did that. You can also use these numbers to adjust the manual yourself to different spots in your canvas. So when typing a three, it went to the three inch mark. Okay, moving to the right side, you can see there are a few options. There's a group. So when you have two or more objects selected, you can group, you can ungroup. When you have any number selected, you can duplicate 
and you can use the delete. There's also delete right when you have the object selected with the little X in the corner. Let's come back to the menu regarding text. When your text is selected, you'll see a sub menu pop up along the top. That's where you can go to select your fonts. I like to keep to my system fonts because I do not have Cricut access. My system fonts are all the fonts I've downloaded and installed on my computer. And that'll allow me to use those without possibly selecting one that I may have to pay for. You can choose a style. So it comes in at regular, you can set it to bold. italics or italics and bold. You can adjust your font size using the up and down arrow or entering a number directly. You can also do it just like you do with shapes with the arrows in and out, as well as the unlock. You can adjust the dimensions manually for the sizing as well. You have a letter spacing option. You can increase or decrease your letter spacing. You can adjust your line spacing. Line spacing is uh, when you have multiple lines of text. So let's add a second line of text. And you probably can't see it because it's behind my picture right now, but if we decrease the line space, you'll see it begin to come up closer to the hello. We'll go ahead and make that smaller so you can see it a little better as well. With multiple lines of text, you can also adjust the alignment of them. So right now they are left aligned. You can center align or right align. And then for curving text, which is your next menu item, that will only work on a single row of text. So I got rid of the two lines, made it back to one. And now if I click that curve menu, I can curve the text in both directions. To fit how I want my design. There we go back to zero. All right, next you have an advanced menu. Advanced has ungroup letters, ungroup lines and ungroup layers. You can also use the ungroup over on the right side. We typically will ungroup if we want to adjust the spacing uh, and the line uh, the letter spacing did not do it for us. So when I was adjusting the letters, my E was getting close to my H, um, but the rest of it I still saw needed movement. So you would just do that manually by ungrouping and then selecting all the pieces that you'd like to move and just moving them over on your canvas. You can regroup them. Oh, I got it with the other design. You can regroup them. You now do, you do lose your, scratch that, edit that out. Now let's move to some of the options at the bottom right of the screen. I see a slice option. To slice, you can only use two items. So we'll go back to this one. And you'll slice one design out of the other. So with both selected, in this case, they're grouped, but they don't have to be. We can ungroup. With both selected, I can click slice. And then if you start peeling apart the layers, you'll see that it has actually sliced what was originally black and on top out of the shadow layer that was on bottom. Your next option is a weld. Weld takes multiple objects, such as the letters of hello, and creates them to a single object. So you would not have cut lines between your letters once you weld. There is not an option to unweld, 
So make sure that this is what you want to do or first create a duplicate so you have a backup plan. Now that hello is one object, you can also see that on the right side that it is a welded result, a single object. I can no longer move those individual letters. The next item is attach. Attaches for two or more items. What you'll see, let me get rid of this. Uh, let me hide this design. Let's group them. And I'm going to click this little eye to hide them. Let's look at hello world for attach. If I do not attach and I click make it, it's going to take it onto my canvas and each piece, my hello being one, but the letters of world were independent, will scramble onto the uh, Cricut cutting mat, taking as little space as possible. If I hit cancel, and I instead attach the word world, Now I can click make it and you'll see that world will now stay together. I can take that one step further and I can prepare my entire design to be as I would like it when I'm going to go cut it. So let's say I take world below hello. Let's say I group that. Oh, let me detach first. Let me group world. So now I have the grouped world and I have hello if I select them both and align them horizontally so they're centered. And that's how I want my design to cut. I would attach that. Now when I click make it, it's going to keep that layout perfectly centered as it was onto the Cricut cutting mat. Okay, your next option at the bottom is to flatten. Flatten will take something and turn it into a print then cut. If I flatten this design and take it to a print then cut, it's going to print the black letters and cut them all out as individual pieces. For that, I would not advise using print then cut, but maybe you want to make this into a sticker with an offset background. I can select offset. I can let it create my offset. So a little larger. Let's click apply and I'm going to go ahead and make that offset white. And if I select all of that now, I can flatten it. It's now flattened as a single print then cut. You can make this into a sticker where it's going to cut around the white, but not cut out the individual hello world. I can show that a little better if I change the color of the canvas. If I click blank canvas on the lower right, I now have a color box at the top menu and you can select a color. This is just visual. It does not affect your design, but helps us to see the white here for the hello world offset. The next part is contour. Go ahead and move hello world to the side and let's bring back our paw prints and let's bring the one let's, let's ungroup so I can grab just the one that has some parts to it. Eh, we'll grab a couple of them. We'll show you a few ways to use um, contour. So contour removes cut lines. So what does that mean? Let's say on this design, I really didn't want the heart and the paw print. I just brought it in because I want the paw print, but this heart part is a cut. If I click contour and I select this, which is actually going to unselect it, it will remove it from my design. You can see here on the side that it's the only one selected. Nothing else did I touch. Click the X and I now just have that paw print. I'm going to hit undo. Maybe I wanted the uh, heart to be red, but the paw print to be gray. I would duplicate the design because I have two colors, a red and a gray. And in contour, I would basically do the opposite with each. So in one case, I remove the heart. In the other case, I'm going to remove 
the paw print, clicking all the pieces of the paw print. Now I've separated it into two separate parts where I can put it back together, but I can change the colors. You'll see on the right, they will show as separate layers. One's there and one is there. When you have an object that kind of has a hollowed out part, maybe I want this to be filled in, but leave the paw print as is. I can come back to contour and select the piece where I want to remove the cut line. Again, this part here we just talked about. And if I exit contour, it's now filled that in. Other quick reference tools on your canvas are your zoom in and zoom out on the lower left of your screen. Simply just changes the way you're viewing the canvas. And a hidden button in the upper left hand corner above your zero on your ruler will change the grid pattern you see on the canvas. Right now you can see all of the lines for the canvas and when I click that it removes them. If I click it again, it brings them back, but just at the one inch marks. And then another click is back to the way it was when we started. I'll go through those one more time, clicking them to watch them go away and then come back at the one inch and then come back for every interval they have. Those are all your tools on the Cricut Design Space Canvas. I hope you got benefit out of watching this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy crafting.